Hi, my dear students. Today we are going to make a ratio analysis uh, practice in order to make a company evaluation for the financial performance. So the four ratio analysis, four basic type are the profitability, where we are looking for the profitability of the company with respect to the other companies or the performance of the company across time. Second, we can go for the activity and the capacity of the company to collect and pay for its financial obligations. The third is the debt ratio and how it is depending, how the company is depending on financing its investment by using debt and if it is in the safe level or not. Finally, liquidity, if the performance of the liquidity and the cash available in the company is enough to cover all its liability or not. So let's see uh, the first example here when we are having a balance sheet which consists of the two sides the assets and liability and stockholder owners equity. And you see here the components of the total current assets and the uh, net fixed assets. And on the other side, you will see the liability and the stockholder owner equity. So here find the current ratio giving this information. And as you remember, or you know, that the current ratio is basically depending on the current assets. We have here current assets. In comparison to the current assets, if the mean, it is my current liability. So I will go for the current asset, which represents three items, the cash, account receivable, inventory, and this is will give me the total current asset. And then I'm going to compare it with the current liability, which is the accounts payable and the accrual, and then you can see that the current assets will be able to cover only 90% of the what of the current liability. So this is the ratio. So if it is, it will be better if the current ratio reach one, but here it is less than one. So the first ratio of the liquidity was the current ratio, the one after it, it will be my quick ratio. What will be my quick ratio? My quick ratio is the current assets minus inventory with respect to the current liability. And this is will subtract, this ratio will subtract the inventory in order to see the available cash to cover all the liability. So it would be similar to the current ratio, but we are going to subtract the inventory from the current assets. So 14,250 minus 4,350, this is will give me my current asset minus inventory. And then I'm going to compare it with the current liability. And it is representing 60% of the current liability, which is not safe situation. What else we can find? We can find also the inventory turnover. Uh, and this inventory turnover is, is depending on the ratio between the COGS, the cost of goods sold, and it is the direct cost of raw, direct raw material and labor, and with the comparison to the inventory. So if you see here that the COGS here, it is, 87,000 it is giving in the notes here. And the inventory, I can bring it from the uh, total assets, then it will give me 4,350. So the COGS is representing the inventory 20 times. This is the inventory turnover. So the stock of the inventory represent 20 times from the total cost of goods sold. What else? Let's go for the other sides of uh, the uh, the activity, which is the average collection period of how many numbers of days I'm collecting my money. So the average collection period, it is representing account receivable divided by average sales. And the average sales, it is the total sales, which is given here divided by the 365. So this is called the average sales of 100,000 divided by 365. And then the account receivable, I will go for the account receivable, it is 8,900 then we will see that you will take 32 days, almost a month to collect your money from outside. So this is the average collection period. The other side, which is the average payment period, which is the, the amount of money that you had to pay for the people you buy the stocks or the products from them. So here it is representing 10% from the COGS and the COGS here, it was given in 87,000. So it is 10% from the COGS and the accounts payable, if you look for the liability and stockholder owner equity, it is 9,000. So it will take only one day. So just giving you one day, they are very tough. 
and when you buy things you have to pay the amount of money in one day let's go for the profitability ratio and in the profitability ratio you will see here that i don't have any profitability here at all i will not use this statement at all i will depend on the given information here because we know that the the sales minus the cogs the sales which is the 100000 minus the cogs which is the 87000 it will give you the 13000 which is representing the earning before interest and tax earning before interest and tax which is we usually name it operating profit or we can give name it earning before EBIT, earning before interest and tax so here it is very easy to find the gross profit margin and the net profit margin so the gross profit margin it will depend on the information here which is the 13,000 divided the 100,000 the time is 100 then it will be 13 percent while the net profit margin it is given clearly then it will be 900 divided by the 100,000 100,000 and it will give you nine percent sure it is this is will be higher and the one after it it will be less in percentage because we pay we we fulfill with our commitments concerning the interests and taxes so this is the um, the profitability let's go for another example of the profitability which is highly demanded when you're doing your analysis which is the return in assets and the return in equity so here when you go for the ROA, return on asset, find the ROA and ROE. So what is the ROA? It is the net profit. What is my net profit? It is the 900. And the assets, it is, will be the 36,000 total assets here. Then it will be representing 2.5. Then the profit represents 2.5% from the total assets. Return in equity, you will have a net profit and it's divided by equity, then it would be what is the equity I can get it. So the equity you can look for it is it 16,000, which is represent the common stock and the return earnings. And this is will represent what we call a 16,200, which is reaching 5.5%. So this is my ROE and ROE. So you will see how you can make financial ratio analysis and make a comment. So the higher, the better. But in this case, he didn't give you a competitors or a time series in order to make sure. Let's go for the, the nicest part, which is the cash flow. And the cash flow usually consists of operating uh, activities. And this is representing the current assets and the current liabilities transaction. And then the investment activity where you are going to invest in the company and financing activity. If, if you remember that when we explain what will be my inflow, so if I will look for the inflow, so if my assets, as you remember, has been decreases, so let's say I was having an asset by 1 million, and then now it is half million. So the assets, the change in assets has been decreasing, then this is will represent an inflow. What will be the outflow if I go and buy assets? I invest in assets and machines and equipment, so I spend and the value increases, then it is not be in, then if the assets here, it is increasing, this is will represent an outflow, this is the assets and the value of the assets increases, I have a machine by 1 million, then it becomes 2 million, then it will be an outflow of cash and this is the negative sum. On the other side, the negative here, it will represent the assets and the assets here, uh, liability if you go for the liability items and you will see if the liability increases i took loans the commitments all this will represent on a positive inflow of cash and vice versa for the liability if the liability decreases this means i had paid back all my liabilities so this is basically the cash inflow and cash outflow let's see and i gather for you a very nice example where you can understand everything in this single slide where you can find the relation between the income a statement performance and i mentioned and the balance sheet financial position so here it is a this is part this part of the question we prepare cash flow given that the income taxes it is ten thousand five hundred. so if you focus with me here you will see that the first item that we have to put it it is the the ten thousand five hundred which is representing an inflow after that, we're going to look for the depreciation, which is 4,000. And you can write it here. You find it given, either given, or you can look for the differences between the depreciation and the depreciation was 18,000. And the difference here, it is 22. Then it, this is the 4,000. So 
This is the two parts where you start the cash flow from operating activities. Let's go for the another items, and it is very important. You have to go for the change in current assets. What will be the change in current assets here? You will see that the current assets was 39 and it is increased to 45,000. So you have money outside, and this is what represent then outflow. The difference between the 39 and the 45,000, it is the 6,000, and this is what we call it outflow. If you go also for the change in inventory, the inventory was 27 and I buy more inventory, then it will be also an outflow. If we go also for the accounts payable, the accounts payable were here, as you see, the changes in accounts payable, it was 3000 and it decreases. So I pay then and it is also an outflow. I pay the accounts payable that I have. If you go for the accruals, which is the publication as well, you find that the values have been decreases, then it is also an outflow. So when you add all the items here, you will find that the net card provided by operation, it is a negative 500. So this is the first part. Let's go for the second part, which is investing activity. What will be the investing? I'm investing in what? Do you remember? We will going to invest in machines, equipment. So it was 40,000 and then it become 42,000. So the assets here has been increased. So this is represent why you are having a negative value because it is an outflow. So the total values here of the summation, I don't have except in these items, which is the minus 2,000. Let's go for the last part of the cash flow statement, which is the finance activity. And we will look for the longer periods here for this uh, analysis. So let's start for the longer period. You will see that notes payable, it was a 40,000 and it's become 50,000. This is the notes payable and the changes here, it is an inflow because I collect money on paper based on commitments I'm going to fulfill it later. Longer term, and when you go for the longer term, which is the loan, it was 8,000 and it become 10,000. So it is increased. So I receive an inflow plus 2,000. Let's find the, the a very interesting part, which is the dividends. How we can find these dividends? So remember that when we are trying to find the dividends, it is basically depending on net income. So what is my net income? My net income is the 10,500. So I will write it how we can find it here. So it will be 10,500, let's say 10,500 minus what I'm going to subtract, subtract the differences between the return earnings and the mean and the change between return earnings in the 24,000 and 28,000 minus the 4,000. So here, if you go, then you are going to distribute 6,500. And this is why it is a negative. It is an outflow. You're going to distribute profit by 6,500. When you add all the items here of the three components, as you see here, the three components that you see them, you will find here then it is 5,500. So if you gather the three items, minus 500, minus 2,000, so it is minus 2,500. And finally, the net change in cash here, uh, it is in finance, it is the 3,000. So when you add minus 500, minus 2,000, plus 3,000, so the answers at the end, you will find that the summation of the three, it will end up by the change and the cash or the changes of cash. So the 3,000, uh, the 3,000 here, net cash of 5,500, let's write it, 5,500. I will write it here, so it is minus 500. And then after that, I will add the minus, the minus, um, minus 2,000. And then I will add plus 5,500. Then you will find that the, the net change in all of them is 3,000. Then your statement is correct because the change in cash is 3,000. So by this way, you find the cash flow from operating, cash flow from investment, and cash flow from finance, 5,000. And when you add the minus 500 and the minus 2,000 and plus the 5,500, then the total it give you what? It will give me 3,000 which is correct because it represents the difference between the cash in 2009 and in 2010. 
I wish you the best of success and I wish this religion help you and best of success. Thank you.